that front bumper don't come off. Better go forward and get a about your trailer. Something funny about this rig, it's only got three tires. Factory, three tire. I got this from a job a couple weeks ago, a month ago, something. They wanted this thing to be hauled off for junk. And I might have actually took them up on that offer, but one of the subscribers, buddy, he, Jay, he said these things are actually worth a couple dollars if they're running. So, I brought it home. Let's see if we can get this thing running. I don't know what year it is. It's a Cushman, last registered on the tags. Road legal in California, which is not easy. 1987. So I'm going to grab the Kubota, put this thing inside the shop because we're starting to lose sunlight and uh, I think it's going to start freezing about an hour ago. It's cold. So, where's the Kubota? Well, girls got away at least an hour. So before I start tearing into this thing and trying to figure out what we're working with, when I say I have no idea about this rig, I have no idea. I assume it runs on gasoline. I don't think it's got a dump bed on the back because well, it's got a hitch bolted to it. It's got a drop hitch and a regular hitch. Oh, I've never seen the safety chains go from the rig back, but yep, that's custom. No tailgate. Does have a jump seat in the back. Found the battery already. Uh, 575 cold cranking amps. Lawnmower. Huh. It's got old crap handles right here in the front. Now, it's got three pedals. Let's cruise around to the other side. Three pedals, three wheels. I see a, something going on here. I think these rub rails are aftermarket because uh, the fenders are all dinged in. I think if I get it running, I'll go ahead and scuff and spray on this just to clean it up a little bit. Yep, there she is right there. Air-cooled something engine. See a carburetor. See oil. Look at good oil. Cannot see where that goes back in there, so we'll just hydrate the carb real quick. It's got two coil packs. Not really sure. Does this come off? It will come off. I did roll this bad boy down the hill, threw it in gear, and let the clutch up, and the engine turned over. I mean, it slowed me down quite a bit. The clutch works. The brake does not, so we're going to have to take all this out, and I do not have the key. But we're going to see if this bad boy will fire up and run broken on that so i need to dig around this thing and maybe we'll find a hide a key and we don't have to hot wire it that would be sweet i'm gonna put the dipstick back down in there the oil is what is this parking brake right here oh my god very stout yep all right let's see if i can find a key i'm not kidding when i say i got my tetanus shot last week must have known this thing was in my future. Check this out. Craziest thing I've experienced. It's about to go up and try to find a new ignition, but I thought, you know what? 
The pick crew cab has an ignition laying in the cab of it. No idea, I don't think it actually goes to the truck. So I was looking at it and I was like, wow, it's got the same stuff on the back. This one's got a key, she works. So I figured what the heck, let's uh, try in here. You gotta be kidding me. Look at that. The random ignition. I mean, it's probably universal stuff, but what are the odds? <laughs> we got key! Yeah, boy! Alright. Got my key. I'm still in disbelief that that worked. Something's kicking on. <laughs> what? The lights work. How about the back ones? It's all we got. It's front ones. How do you turn? That's got to be the headlight, you know? Headlight, don't work. Starter? Dang it. Or maybe it's got a clutch switch. Neutral. This is a neat trick. Check this out. I don't have ignition anymore, but her body is powered up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The power there. Come on, go back together. I made the wire just long enough. Power there, but not on the other side of this wire. All right, I thought my ignition failed. Somebody said I try to sound country. I'm just talking. I thought my ignition failed, but I got power there, key on power, but my lights aren't working. And then hit the center doodad. We got power kicking out. Let's see if we got it there. Yep, flicker in there. So our ignition's still functional, but I guess I just ripped one of the wires out for my lights. We got something going on with our wiring right here because uh, pegs an amp meter, not volts, amps. So we should be able to test good power there. Where's the where's that? Who's honking? Huh. We'll see if that lights up when I hit the key. Pink wire. You see a pink wire back there? Nope. Some of gun. You guys want to hear a funny story? So, here it is. Negative on the right. Positive on the left. You notice how the positive just clocked all the way down? Yeah. Uh, is that a positive sign right there? Mm-hmm, it is. Is that a negative right there? Mm-hmm, it is. I didn't flip this battery around or nothing. It was hooked up backwards. And I was thinking, well, what are the odds this thing's one of those backwards, goofy things that I've heard of but never had? So I called my old man. He said, those are super rare. You know, the positive and negative kind of rigs that I still don't understand that at all. It's, you know, whatever. But... Talk to my buddy Jay, and he's had three of these, and he said, nope, all of them are the normal. So somebody hooked that bad boy up backwards, and I don't, I, so I've been hooked up correct this whole time, I think. No, I haven't. Have I? I don't know. Either way, 
that's why we're having some backwards kind of dealio going on i think maybe ah this is confusing i'm gonna hook this other battery up to it the correct way and see how that works oh, i figured it out somebody's a jackass why why are you like this somebody put a new ground in it and use a red wire that's nice real nice touch yeah so okay good thing we didn't burn it to the ground couldn't see it because it had so much junk on it so we got power backwards let's put the other battery in it that is yep yep i'm going to tape this up and then try to tape that one up so that next generation can figure it out 40 years later when they go to work on it can you believe that could have crawled under there and found out but i didn't want to i wanted to apparently burn an hour on the phone talking to people where's my tape now that we're back up to somehow we were getting negative power through the positive end uh black that out i'm going to pop this end off eventually so that i can put my red heat shrink on there so we know what's going on Oh, looky here, looky here. Full lights. <laughs> Cranks over like a madman. You believe that? You mix time. Sprayed it everywhere. Let's see. <laughs> I have no words. Ah, oh, the stars! Come on. Oh, come on. Don't do me like that. Hammer. Better bend it. 30 years. 80. 97, 2007. 2017, we got 36 years. Come on, baby, let's give me a starter. Oh, you. Stay tuned, I'm gonna go beat it some more. It, it runs. How, and it doesn't sound like it's knocking. We need more fuel. <sighs> yeah, we'll just flood it to death. That'll get it. You believe that? I don't. I 100% don't. What, am I, what are we watching right now? Come on, one hand. Uh-oh. Disconnected the old power wire. you guys believe me if i told you i messed up the inlet tube elbow for the fuel i didn't realize it was plastic and i was trying to take the junk line off of it to either replace or just so i could 
you know, make sure the pump was pumping and cleaned it out. So it's got this weird barbed metal insert right there into a plastic guy. But I figure what would be the harm in taking the whole carb off of there? Because I had to anyway to get this ridiculous thing off. I was hoping it was going to be pipe thread or something like that right here. Not really looking like it. That way I could just put a metal elbow in there. I know I got some of those. I don't know if I dare to reef on this a little bit. Nope. Hope that didn't just ruin me for later on. So we need to get a new one of these. Who has ever seen one of these? I think I might have sealed my feet a little bit with that right there. Unless there's a Allen or something on the inside, which I doubt. But, well, we got the carb out. Let's go ahead and open up and see how the needle is doing. Break off. Don't break off. Better luck with an impact. Just getting a good bite. I'm trying to break it off with a screwdriver. <laughs> Nasties. What the hell is that? <laughs> float is stuck well I got that nipple thing out of there and it drilled her out to 2164 so we're on an eighth inch MPT tap through there and we're just gonna put an elbow on this thing because that was a dumb design they had hopefully I'm not making it dumber <clears throat> Perfect. Clean the needle. And then I was checking to see. I'm like, what the heck? It's leaking? Where's it leaking? You probably can't even see it on the camera, but there's a little pinhole. I don't know where this valve came from. It was in a kit. Or not this valve, but this fitting, the elbow. There's a little dang hole right there. So I still gotta go to the parts store. Grab one of those, but I'll grab a fuel filter while I'm there. I think. Um, that's not fuel line. What's this? No, that's like eight wire. I don't even know what that was. I think I got some fuel. Ah, shoot. Now we're back from not one, not two, but three different hardware stores to get that little fitting and then I stopped off at Napa and got fuel line fuel filters and this sucker's ready to go back on there I made the mistake when I put that nut back on it and bent that damn cross tube so that took a little bit to straighten that out so I can get the butterfly flapper back in there so we're ready to throw this back on and see if we can make anything happen how close to success we were She's just barely touching the distributor. Yeah, you're winging right on it, so we'll just shave that off quick. Get my fuel mix jug. Ryan through the fuel pump. See if she actually works. You just gave me a little thumb.
super simple carburetor. We're gonna add a little bit of gas to the tank, ran fresh fuel line this morning. Give her a little bit and see if we're leaking. These dang hoses kink over in the winter. And they don't come back, be careful. Tank shot, dang it. Tank. Yep. Son of a gun. And I just ran brand new fuel line. Dang it. Oh well. So you find out. Well, we're in the final countdown. This thing drove in here less than 20, well, never mind. This thing was pallet forked in here less than 24 hours ago. And by some grace of God, we might drive it out of here under its own power right now. I think I put my socket in the wrong spot right there. Go back here and turn on my fuel pump because I don't quite trust the mechanical one yet. Sounds like it's ripping. All right. Get my foot on the throttle. <laughs> oh my God. Put the parking brake on a little bit. Oops.
garden. We're right under here. I know folks are going to say, oh, you should have sanded it. You should have painted it with, you know, different paint. should have primed it. Well, be honest with you, anything was better. And gave it the, you know, essentially an acid bath first. And it's not out in the elements. It's just getting completely destroyed. It's been sitting for 30 plus years. This is what you get. All right, hit the key. Oh, my headlight don't work. Gosh dang it. <laughs> I have to get in there and wiggle it around. Got tail lights. There you go, dude. Put this in there. We'll cut that open. Yeah. All right, my 1974 Cushman. I believe this thing was a meter made down in San Fran. Rescued it off of a job. It was scheduled to be destroyed, which is a shame because these things are, I don't know what they're scarcity or the rareness of them but this happens to be basically street legal motorcycle but it's got an extra set of extra tire see the plate last tagged 1987 it's got a little two-cylinder hoopty i ran an electric fuel pump down in there got everything plumbed new hoses ran for the fuel line Dumped some gas in the tank and the fuel neck had a little rot going on. So we just got a little hoopty tank in the bed. It's got a jump seat in the back. Batteries tucked in underneath here. Tow hitch. Oh, that's definitely aftermarket. Somebody weld that on because there ain't no stability there. Park and brake. This thing will turn on a dime. Hit the key. Fuel pump kicks off. Builds our pressure, we got all our lights. Still needs a little bit of TLC. I've actually spent quite a bit of time on this old girl. I don't know if the brake lights work, but they are hooked up. I just can't come back here and see. Oh, so I'm gonna, we'll have to, there we go. That one's a clap-on light. Let's drive her around a little bit. The starter kinda acts up every once in a while, but let's see if she'll be cool for the camera. I think it's a three speed, but I just go first to third. Pretty nice little hoopty. Watch your here. All right, plain and simple, folks. This is the kind of little projects I really enjoy doing. The main ingredient of it is just bringing something back to life because this rig, we had worked this project on the V-Belt and Sun channel. We were there about five, six days, I believe, and this little truck was in the way right in the driveway in front of the shop a majority of that time. Closing out the job, I did take care of some scrap iron on the property, but they pointed out this rig and they said they wanted that thing crunched, hauled off, whatever. They have no attachment to it at all. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to take that thing home and try to save it. And I'll be danged. That rig turned out awesome. I spent a couple solid days working on this rig. Threw it up on Old Marketplace and a nice couple from up the hill. Decided to come down and swooped it up. Now, I did fix the brakes. I got the parking brake working started up on a dime as soon as they were there it it's a nice little rig far from perfect but for the amount of time i put into it bringing it back around from the dead this machine is going to go on to its next life and continue living and i'm pretty happy about that i didn't want to go full restoration and dive too much time into it we did an oaky weekend rebuild rehaul um restoration but that's good enough for who it's for at the time being but it goes to show you a free little project that you pick up on the side of the road, such as a lawnmower, um, snowblower, Cushman. You never know what you can do with it if you put a little bit of time and TLC into it. 
you might actually make enough to make a house payment. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Later on.